Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're going to be going through creating a save and load system. So when you start your game or just in any point in time, you can you can save things like, you know, your coins or your score, stuff like that. And then when you reload into the game after you've closed it, it will then retrieve that information so you can save your progress. So let's get to it anyways. All right, guys. So first of all, um, for this example, I'm going to be using the platformer series. So you don't have to have been following this, but if you have been, then this is fine. If not, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have your variables that you want to be storing. So for example, in this project, we have coins. So, so for this, that's the main thing we're going to be saving today is how many coins you have. Um, you can also store other things as well, but just keep that in mind. So make sure like you've added a global variable or alternatively. So one thing I will just quickly mention is if you have the paid version of construct, there's there are better methods of going about this where you would use a dictionary and so if you have the paid version, you could also look into dictionaries and um, and how you would load those instead. So I'll put up on the screen right now. Uh, this is a quick uh, snippet of how I would preload uh, a dictionary instead of instead of what we're doing today, where it's basically the same method. But instead of using global variables, you will receive and update things in the dictionary. OK, so without the way, guys, the first thing we need to add is we want to right click and we're going to be inserting a Ajax. This is going to allow us to uh, uh, receive and update the information in the local storage. So just like the save on your computer or, or phone if you're doing mobile. On top of that, we also want to add local storage. All right, guys, so once you've done that, next head over to your event sheet and we're going to be creating a new function and we're going to call this save. Now, this is just to keep everything nice and organized. So now once we've got this working, we can just call this function every time we want to save something. So it's always good to just make sure you use functions instead of hard coding in every single different event, you know, and how, what you want to do. So for this save event, what we want to do is we want to set the local storage variable. So we want to say local storage. We want to set item. And now we're going to give this key a name. So this is basically each key is going to correspond to what you want it to be. So for example, with this one, we want to set the key coins. And then we want to set the value to so we want to set the value to coins, the global variable. So make sure it's this one, the globe. And it's as simple as that for setting the, uh, the, co the coins. So every time you call this function, it's going to set an item called coins in the it's like which gets saved into your system to the value of what your dictionary is. I mean, sorry, your global variable is. OK, and then so once you've done all that, all, now all you have to do is just every time you want to save, you just call that function. So for example, here we have when we set our character's health to zero. So once they're about to end the game, you could just call the function save. So you just, so you just go function save. And then so what you do is you could I would save first and then end the game. So that would do so once every time the game ends, it will save how many coins you have collected. So the next time you go back into the game, your your coins should have updated. OK, so then one other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we actually load this information in when you start the game or start a new level, for example. All right, guys, so what we need to do is we need to add an item. We're going to say local storage and we're going to say on on I on exists. So we're going to say on item exists. And then what we're put in here. So the key we put in here is what we put for the name. So whatever you've called it. So we called this coins. So let's put coins key. So what this says is so if this exists, so if it's already been saved before and then all we need to do is we need to add another action and we're going to say system. We're going to set the value of the coins variable we created. And we're going to set this to local storage dot key. And that's all you need to do now. But when this is dot key, this is now going to be referring to this coins key we did here. And then on top of this, so let's say we also wanted to save something like the level number. So you could repeat this process. You could add another variable called level. You could set the initial value to one. And then all you would have to do is you would once again, you'd say so on on level exists, set set level to local storage key. And that's how you would basically go about the process of adding, adding multiple different things. OK, so finally, all we need to do is on. The, so when you start a level or start the game, we need to check if these items actually exist. So this this is like if it exists, we're going to trigger an action, but we need to actually find out if it exists beforehand. So what we're going to do is we're going to just say local storage check item exists and then here in here you would just add so we would put add the keys we've added so we've got coins 
And then also we added levels so we could do that. And that's basically it for this. So as you saw right now, we have the values. We then check if they exist. If they do exist, we set the names stored in the local storage to the new value. All right, guys, real quick. One thing I just, uh, so instead of set key, we want to actually set this to item value. That was my bad. I just got that wrong. Um, so just instead of set key, set that to item value. And then on top of this, one, th one final thing we need to do is, so in order to make it actually register as a number, is so you could just manually set the items coins to a number at the start but a better method for this is so what we could do is we could add a sub event and we could add a check so what we could do is we could say system compare value and then so we'll compare the variable coins and then what we'll do is we'll say is equal to zero so if coins is equal to zero which is which we will set as the default value we can then just set coins to zero so all this is this just actually sets it to a number because when it first starts off, it's not, it's over, it would come up as none if you just set the text. So anyways, once you've done that, I'm assuming, so if you wanted to show your text somehow, you could then, in on the start of layout, you can say, here, so you get a text. So we've got text called coins, and then you'll just set the text to the coins variable like so. And you just click the globe. And that should be everything. So everything here should work now. So if we test this, So we have zero coins. Now, as you can see, I was, I was just testing this a second ago. So right now we have 18 coins. If I damage the player and we start again, as you can see, we now have 18 coins. And now every time you save, die, reload, anything like that, the coins variable is going to be saved. And then anything else that you do, so for example, you would save the level number. So that would also save. So all you'd have to do is, so you could add checks for this. So, you know, whatever level number you're on, you could go to. So... You could go to your start of layout. You could add another check. And you could say level equals to one, for example. And you could say system. And you say go to layout. And you say level one. And then you could duplicate this equals two. And you go to level two. There's loads of ways to go about doing this. This, this. this is just one quick example. I'm trying to just give you an idea of how you'd go about doing this sort of thing. Because once again, like, if you really get into Construct and you want to, you know, you know, continue further, like, using dictionaries and things like that is much more efficient. You can just keep everything much, you know, much better organized. But yeah, so that this this would also work. So so even even right now, um, even right now, just 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 to show you this example, I could I could do this as well. So we could say, you know, we'll we'll set, we'll set level to to one. And here we'll set level to two. And then what we could do, so just to test, we'll, you know, we'll, um, let's set this to two, just so you could see it working. And then once again, so if we start the game, and then it's now put us in the second layout. We'll set it to one. Oh, one thing is, so it's not going to take us back because now it's already, it's already saved, right? It's already two, so... That's one thing to keep in mind as well. But anyways, yeah, that's just a few examples anyways, guys. The co that's it to make it work, though. Just keep in mind, all you have to do is, so... You want to set the value, check if it exists, and then if it exists, you then just, you know, you just then set in the item. So, it's as simple as that, really. Hopefully, that's not too complicated, and I've not, you know, I've not made it confusing. But yeah, if you followed this along, that you should now have a fully working save and load system for your game. And if you get more into Construct, I'd highly recommend, you know, eventually getting the getting the paid version if if possible. But it's not necessary. It, it works fine like this. It's just um, it's a little bit more work to get it organized. But you could always use groups and things to keep it all, you know, nice and tidy. You could, you know, you could create a group and call it Save Load or something like that. You know, you could you could literally just you know create a group, you know, load, and then you could just you know you could drag your certain things in there just just to keep it nice and easy. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed, guys. I hope that was clear. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.